Hi, so a couple of weeks ago I made a video on Cubase direct routing, explaining all ins and outs, and at the end I kind of concluded I don't get it. Because basically everything you could do with direct routing, you could either do with the normal routing in Cubase or with Sense. But well, I got so much comments on that video with a lot of creative users of direct routing that it actually started to make sense to me as well. So let's go. Now, if you don't know what direct routing is in Cubase, I would strongly advise you to check out my initial video first, because in this video, I will not go into the basics of direct routing. I'm assuming that you already know what it is. But what I am going to mention in this video is a number of reasons why direct routing is actually a useful feature in Cubase, and it adds to the normal routing and to the effect sense. Now, as the example project in this video, I will again use the project with the drum recordings of a new song of my band Wash, which will be released in April 2023. And if you're watching this video after that time, I hope I will have remembered to put a link to that song in the description below. But let's go to the first reason why direct routing can be very useful. So this is the project with the drum recordings. I have some ambient mics, overhead mics going to a group, snare top and bottom mics going to the group acoustic snare, and then going to a snare group, because I still intend to add electronic snares as well. Three kick mics going to the acoustic kick group, going to the kick group, a hi-hat mic, a special mic micing the shell of the snare drum to provide a nice fat sound. I still have the Hertz drums library in there as well for support, and everything goes to the drums group in the end. Now the first reason that you might be using direct routing is if you have a lot of effect channels. For example, over here I have 15 effect channels configured, and if I go to the mixer, you see I'm sending the final drums group to all of those effect channels. But as you can see already, I only have room for 8 cents on this channel. However, if you look at direct routing, you can see that this provides you a way to route to 7 more effects channels via direct routing. So if you run out of cents on a channel, you can use direct routing to send the channel to other effect channels. Now, of course, there is a bit of a difference, because in a normal sense, you can have a send level that you can change. With direct routing, the send level is purely determined by the fader over here, because it's a post-fader send. So in that respect, it may be wise to reserve this for actual parallel change, for example, parallel compression on this channel, and things like reverb or modulation or delay, for example, to use an actual send for that, so that you can more finely tune the amount that you want to send to the effects channel. Now you may be thinking, well, Ladywood Studios, that's kind of ridiculous, so many cents on one channel. But maybe it doesn't mean that you're using all of them at once, right? You may have automation in which you enable certain cents for certain sections of the song, or even, which is also a very common approach, you may be using every row in your cents part of the mixer for one particular cent. For example, the first row you might always want to use for cent one, and the third row you may always want to use for effects channel three, and the fifth row you may always want to use for sending to effects channel five, so that on the same row you know you have always the same effect. And if you use this way you will be running out of sense much quicker. So in that case it may be worthwhile to use direct routing as additional sense if you run out of the usual sense. Now another reason that you might want to use direct routing is if you want to export special stems from your project. For example a full mix without vocals or without certain instruments or exactly the combination of just two instruments for example. Let's have a look. So this is again my project with drum tracks. But imagine now, for example, that I wanted to export a stem with just the ambient microphones and the overheads, and maybe another stem with just the snare and the kick drum. To do that with direct routing, I can add group tracks for that. For example, stem, ambience, overhead. And I can add another group track called stem, kick, snare. And if we now go to the mixer, I can make sure that my overhead group also routes to the stem ambience overhead as well as my overhead group. And the snare group routes to the stem kick snare as well as the kick group. And if you now go to the Cubase export dialog and you select multiple over here, you can see that I can export my stereo out, but I can also export these two stem group channels. Let's call them stems. And if I now add this job to the queue, you can see I will get my regular stereo out mix and I will get two separate files for both of the stems that I set up. And this can now all be exported from one batch job in Cubase. Quite handy. 
Now at this time, if you like this video or find it useful, please give it a big like for the YouTube algorithm so that it gets shown to more people. Subscribe to the channel and you can ring the little bell icon if you want to be notified when I post another video. For even more support, you can use the super thanks button below the video. Or if you want to buy anything at these stores and you use the affiliate links which are in the description of this video, I will get a small percentage of your purchase without any extra cost to you. Again, highly appreciate it. Now the third reason why you might want to use direct routing instead of sends is for organizational purposes. For example, you may want to put actual real effects like reverb and delay on sends and parallel compression buses via direct routing. Let's have a look. So I now have set up a number of effects channels, a reverb channel, a delay channel, a modulation channel, a parallel compressor one channel and a parallel compressor two channel. And if we now go to the mixer, you may want to use the reverb delay and modulation via sense. You can also choose how much reverb and how much delay and how much modulation you want to add via those sense. But the parallel compression buses, you may just want to use direct routing for that. And then you can use these faders over here to blend in the parallel signals at the amount that's appropriate for the mix. Now lines may become a little blurred between, well, what's an effect and what's a real parallel channel. But I can definitely see the use of this if you want to use parallel compression techniques like Michael Brower does in his mixes, for example, where he uses a lot of parallel compression on various parts of the mix. Now, another reason why you might want to use direct routing instead of sense is because direct routing is post panner. This means that if you want to route the channel to an effects channel, including the right pan position, as you have it in your original channel, then it's much easier to do that via direct routing than it is to do it via sense. Let's have a look. Now in this case, I have added another drum crush channel, sort of similar to what I showed you last time. And on this channel, there is the pulsar compressor, which really crushes the drums. Let's have a listen. Yeah, so in this way, you can blend in the crushed drums with the original drums. However, and I'm going to turn off the sound for this for a second, so that I can talk while the audio is playing. What you're seeing now is if I pan the original channel that I'm routing from, for example, go fully to the left, you can see that this automatically also gets reflected in the channel that I'm routing to. So I'm also only routing the left part to the drum crush channel. Now, if I do the same thing with sense, And let's just route it at level zero. What you can see now is that although my original channel is still panned to the left, the send is pre-panner because my drum crush track still receives both sides of the stereo channel. So that's really a fundamental difference of direct routing and sense. Now you can of course manually pan the send as well. Over here I'm sending to drum crush and I can go to panning and then I can pan the send to the left as well. And then you see over here that my signal also goes only to the left of my effects channel. But it's an extra thing to think about and remember when you're using sense, copy the pan position of the track that you're sending from. And with direct routing, you get it automatically. And especially if there's automation on the original channel, then of course it's very inconvenient to have to manually copy that automation to the panning of the send as well. So in this way, direct routing actually offers something different from a regular send. Now in this video, I've been using drum recordings. And if you're really into recording drums and editing live recorded drums, then I also have a separate video to do time correction for live recorded drums in three ways in Cubase. Check it out, enjoy, and see you soon. Mm -hmm.